Um, thank you everyone for joining us. Um, today I'd like to give first a brief introduction to the value chain analysis um, technique that we've used in the Atlantic Ethnet project to try and, and, and really delve deeply into um, how companies can focus on their product and uh, use some of our structured techniques to, to help them identify a better or a more complete path to market. Um, so briefly, just a, a, a quick note on the on the on the Atlantic Ethnet project. So we are um, seven partners across the Atlantic area of the EU, funded by Interreg, and we are trying to do two things. We're trying to help companies, SMEs in our region, to um, become more competitive through the use of key enabling technologies, and simultaneously we are developing a pilot production ecosystem to serve these companies in the pilot production that uses the key enabling technologies. Um, one of the important things about key enabling technologies is that they can provide a leveraging effect in the sector that they are applied to. So we want to be able to exploit this leveraging effect for the medical technology sector and help these companies that we are working with um, use the key enabling technologies in the most efficient way possible. So one of our techniques um, that we think can help a company figure out how to um, develop their technology or their product in an, in an efficient way is the value chain analysis. Um, so this is a this is a product centered value chain analysis, um, and it's a technology driven value chain analysis. But the very first step that we do with a company, and um, if you look at the previous talk on innovation audits from my colleague Diane Crespo, you'll find out some about how we selected for the companies that were brought through to this process. One of the first things we do is we sit down with the company and we define the product. Um, defining the product takes a number of different stages. Um, one of them is we define it in terms of the company and its position in the marketplace. You know, how does the product relate to existing technologies? How does it relate to existing experience within the company? A second technique we might use is that of the system model. Now the system model is a, it's an economic system um, that models a, a mature technology. And we use this as a framework to identify all of the elements essential for our technology or our product to be successful. We'll talk about this in more depth later on. Um, we track our technology in terms of its position on the S-curve. So our product is placed, um, we're looking for um, products or technologies that are poised to climb that S-curve in terms of adoption into the, the greater sector. But the real core of, of our technology assessment is the, the value chain. Um, it's a product-centered value chain that uses this stepwise structure to assess from the basic raw materials through into the product and further out into the marketplace. But for our particular value chain analysis that we undertook with the 25 companies that were part of Atlantic Ethmed, we focused exclusively on the market side or the demand side. So these are from the product, through the application of the product into its end uses and further elaborate into the societal challenges that motivate that. So the critical part of our first meeting with the company to uh, undertake the value chain analysis is to build out this demand tree for their product. So where we have a, a product that's well-defined based on our previous exercises um, and we understand what its main applications are, we understand how each of these applications may enable an end use, and we need to understand further what are the societal challenges that drive the need for this product and these end uses of it. Um, an example um, is here is based on a, a LiDAR value chain that I did a number of years ago, um, where you can see that we have a single product with four applications, each application having three or so uh, end uses, and these end uses are motivated by societal challenges. So once we have our, our 
technical value chain identified, the next thing we need to do in our analysis process is understand who are the stakeholders. Um, we have a number of steps involved in identifying the stakeholders. Um, and we call this our mapping exercise. So understanding who these stakeholders are, where they are, and how relevant they are is, is critical to understanding the value of our product in the marketplace. Um, one thing that we do is we try and concentrate on the region and the sector that our, our uh, company is in and that it's targeting. And to, to do this, we take use of some of the tools that the European Union has put in place, specifically related to um, strategic clusters throughout the, the European member states. And we, we look at the, the member lists of various cluster organizations. And there's a number of tools here um, that you can see. And we use the members to create our very own Google that only looks at these um, companies that are in the relevant industry clusters in the relevant geographic area. So we're taking, we're taking the globe and we're shrinking it down to the companies that we're interested in working with who are in the right geographical area, um, who are in the right sector, and who are already engaged in, um, in, through, through a cluster organization. So we crawl the web, we extract member lists from the clusters, um, and we create a custom search engine. Our, our search engine has about 10,000 URLs um, from 10,000 member organizations of the various clusters. So we, we, this was a manual process we undertook. Um, we created one custom search engine for the entire Atlantic Hetmed project as um, it was entirely focused on medtech. Um, we included as many of the clusters in the EU as we could, and a few sample organizations outside of the EU also. And we created the, the Atlantic Hetmet Custom Search Engine, um, which is available through the project website for anyone who's curious about it. Um, and what we do is we take our value chain, our technical value chain, and the, the terms that we've used to generate this value chain now become keywords in our search. So our hunt for stakeholders is driven by the information we, we generated when we were filling in this value chain demand tree. We plug our, our various search terms uh, into the custom search engine and we assess the results. Um, so the results will typically be a company or a company website. And in order to decide whether they are a stakeholder or not, we need to generate a value proposition. Um, this value proposition is critical for the rest of the um, analysis process, as this is what we're evaluating when we come to the scoring segment. Um, our, our value proposition must be specific to the product, um, and it must be clear and straightforward. Um, if we can't generate a clear value proposition, these are not a relevant stakeholder. Um, the third stage then is the scoring. So the scoring is is the part that takes the longest amount of time. Um, so once we've identified a, a stakeholder, we go through a number of criteria. Some of these are simple questions with a with a, a yes no answer. Like we ask, are they are they in a related activity? Um, could they be conflicted? Um, are they engageable? Is there already a working relationship? We delve a bit deeper. We think about the technology readiness level that these stakeholders um, will use our product in. We manage all of these questions through a, a dedicated scoring um, template in Excel. Here you can see an example of, of an application. So on the bottom, you can see the various tabs, product application, end user product. Um, in this case, we're looking at the the, the application on the top left, speed measurement, and we see how we have a, a stakeholder on the right-hand side highlighted in red, um, linked to that application. And we have a various list of, of our questions answered um, as we traverse through the, uh, the, the Excel template. You can see the, the various questions captured here, the, 
the depth of information that's gathered. Um, we have a number of questions which are answered based on the innovation potential of our company and its stakeholder. Um, and all of this information is scored and it's fed into an algorithm which produces the overall score, which we see on the right hand side. So at the end of, of, of that process, our, our company, our stakeholder, um, gets entered into the list with that final score. And this allows us then to undertake some more um, uh, structuring of these stakeholders for the company. Um, at the end of this process, we have our, our full list of relevant stakeholders and we can, we can use these scores to identify the sectors or the applications that are most important for our product. Um, once we have scored these, we now revert to the system model. So you may have noticed that one of the one of the categories that we had for stakeholder included its its exposure to the system model. Um, and it may help to explain a little bit what we mean by the system model. So this is this is a, an economic system. Um, it's graphically represented here and it's a um, it looks at the, the global marketplace, the global um, system that our, our product sits in that the it has a sources as you see on the left um, tools on the right distribution in the middle control on the bottom so if it's a, a market system it means that there's an exchange of goods and services um, that these goods services take the, the the format of maybe mass or energy and they have to originate someplace and that's the source on the left hand side um, they have to be used or transformed into their final form at the output, which is the tool. The tool generates this final output. Um, and they have to get from the source to the tool, this is the distribution segment, and they have to be in the format that's usable by the tool. This is what is meant by the package payload. Um, and all of these interactions need to be ensured and um, managed by a control element, which is on the bottom. Um, we can simplify a little bit, saying that maybe the tool is the meaningful output of the system, that our source are the essential elements for the operation of your product. The distribution perhaps is the pathway between these, and the package payload is the formatting again, and control is, it's, uh, it's clearly understandable. We'll also point out that the interface where these, these various elements meet and where the the energy mass or information gets exchanged these are very important parts of our of our system um, a simple example we can give is the light bulb um, the the light bulb produces the meaningful output of this system which is light but in order to do so it requires a source of electricity so generation or battery power that this must be distributed through an electrical grid or circuitry and must be distributed in a particular package payload, so in a particular format, so the right frequency, the right, um, the right voltage um, for use in our final um, tool, the light bulb. And all the, the interactions are controlled by various um, circuit elements, including something as simple as the light switch. Um, and to highlight the, the importance of the interface here, um, the way that the, the tool interfaces with the distribution can be uh, critical to how many various types of tools can be used in this, in this system. Um, so the, the, the socket in this example um, is a highly versatile interface. Another example might be um, the iPhone or the smartphone where the, the meaningful output of the system is information to the user. And it requires information at the source to be inputted in a particular format um, for distribution through the, the mobile network. Um, that this distribution, um, it can be cellular or it can be through hard lines, but it takes a particular format and it is controlled by the let's say for iPhone by the App Store or for iTunes or, or various elements of, of Apple's infrastructure. Um, we will 
use this system model to assess the results of our value chain analysis. So we take the, the stakeholders, we assess them as we go, and then we build up a system for each of our applications um, of our product. And we can look then at the completeness of this system and get a sense of whether there is a mature marketplace here for our product and its application, whether there are gaps, um, whether our our company is well placed to take to take advantage of their product in the way that they that they would like to take advantage of it, um, and perhaps we can also see who are the key players that need to be engaged with at this stage in your product development. Um, we end up with our list of stakeholders who are scored and graded, which is a a, a useful um, initial marketing tool for our company. We take this, this this value chain analysis and we we use it as a training opportunity for the company so that they can undertake this process themselves. Um, and in in every respect, this is very much an iterative process. So we start with the definition of our product and we re revert to a redefinition of our product. So we've undertaken the first round of this value chain analysis for the companies, the 25, 26 companies involved in Atlantic Kepmed, but now the onus is on them to carry it forward. Um, in future talks, I will explore a bit about the, um, the results of the 25 value chain analysis from the perspective of the company, but uh, and in a, a third talk, I will look at the results of the value chain analysis from the perspective of the regions. Um, and I'd very much encourage you, if you want to learn more, to go to the Atlantic Ketmed website, atlantic-ketmed.eu, where you can find more information on value chain analysis. There's a, a video um, going into much more depth on the various elements of the process, um, or to contact one of the Atlantic Ketmed team if you want to find out more. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ian. It's impressive uh, the amount of field work that was done within this exercise. Um, when you mentioned that you were looking into um, technical value chains or positioning the SMEs within a technical value chain, a technical product, how many value chains did you identify or how many value chains are we talking about? For Atlantic Ketman, we have done 26 of these exercises. And you, um, okay, 26, okay. Um, and this repository uh, that you mentioned, which I think will be very useful in the future for matching uh, stakeholders among them, among themselves. Um, does this, I suppose this database for the time being only covers the five Atlantic area pro, uh, countries, correct? Are you, you're referring to the search engine? Is the search engine, yes. The search engine has, has all of Europe, or we attempted oh. to get all of Europe. Okay. Um, and we also included some examples just as a, a kind of a, a test from the United States. Um, so we have, we have one cluster from the Boston area, but it primarily focuses on the members of the cluster observatory um, and um, the EU was primarily our, our focus. So we wanted to concentrate on on stakeholders who would be accessible to our companies geographically. Okay. Um, and the main users of this uh, platform, of this repository, uh, how, how, who, would they, who would they be, more or less? Who is... Well, for, for now, they're us. Okay, but in the it's, future? It's the team of Atlantic Ketman. This will be publicly available as an output from the system, uh, from the project. And in um, the future, regional authorities, national authorities, SMEs, possibly, yeah, intermediary yeah. organizations, they can all use this database, I suppose. I, I think the, the technique of, of creating a custom search engine is, is quite powerful um, for finding out a lot about your region. Um, so it, it makes the best use of the internet, but with uh, limiting it to something manageable. So if you did a, a search like, like we have done on the open internet, there could be you know, there could be a trillion hits, which is impossible at a human level to sort out. So um, by by generating this kind of 
the representative subset, you're, you're, you're narrowing down the focus to a particular area and you're, you're trying to ensure that the, um, uh, that the results are relevant from a kind of a, an accessibility point of view um, and that the sector is, is represented. So if, you, if you're looking at um, medical technology, you want the healthcare sector um, but if you were, were looking at drug development, you might go for a, a slightly different sector or, or automobiles or, you know, the, the, as far as I understand, the, the, um, there are almost 30 various um, sector profiles from the cluster observatory. So you could theoretically narrow down to um, agri-food in a very particular way or agri-food intersected with with medical technology or whatever, you know, whatever the, the particular need of your application is. Mm -hmm. um, for the time being, does this um, database or repository platform, I like it more to call it more uh, platform since it's a search engine, um, it only includes SMEs, right? What, or does it include RTOs that have pilot lines, for instance, universities? It, it only includes members of cluster organizations. Um, so there, of the 10,000, there's a whole array of, of various types of organizations, including RTOs, okay. including universities, including uh, many, many SMEs. Um, and in my next talk, or my third talk, I'll explore that in a bit more detail. Okay, so thank you very much, Ian.